This here by my side is Dionysus, also known as Bacchus or Liber Pata to the Romans. Dionysus was one of the archetypal gods of the ancient Mediterranean, that vast region that links Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. He was mostly associated with nature and agriculture, uh, in particular wine making. And wine was central to many ancient societies in the Mediterranean and further east. And you can see here that he holds a bunch of grapes in his hand. There's a wreath of ivy and vine leaves in his hair and the missing right probably held a drinking vessel. The cult of Dionysus was somewhat unusual. It was believed that his following consisted of both humans uh, and semi-divine creatures. And in his actual cult, women were very prominent, um, which was slightly unusual. People had to be initiated into his mysteries in several stages. Rites involved a sort of frenzied ritual, song and dance, um, were very active. Dionysus was believed to have died and then been reborn. Uh, and that was attractive to worshippers uh, who believed into the resurrection, especially in later antiquity. This statue comes from a small temple in, a, in an ancient city in northern Africa. It was made in the second century. It really stands at the end of a long iconographic tradition that continued for many centuries. The beginning in the archaic period, uh, Dionysus was depicted as a mature bearded man. And then about 500, 600 years before this um, statue was made, he changed into this youthful type. And that continued throughout the rest of antiquity. We might wonder about his stage of semi-undress and find that unusual. Uh, but really all this does is draw more attention to his body. Perhaps this seems like a, an average, you know, normal modern body to us now, but to the ancient viewer, this was clearly superhuman. You would rarely encounter something like this in nature. This is a very athletic body, but muscular and soft at the same time, and it exudes a very strong eroticism. Western viewers might be quite familiar with this type of image. Uh, for an Indian audience, uh, maybe the lack of direct engagement with the worshipper is unusual. Um, but Greek sculpture, Roman sculpture is all about arrested movement. Dionysus might turn to you as worshipper any moment or draw you into his following. Also remember that this would have been brightly painted and would have had a, a much stronger immediate presence originally. In antiquity, Dionysus was believed to have roamed wildly, even reached India. And if you look at the drapery, Gandharan sculpture comes to mind almost immediately. And we can really see that this, this sort of iconography became an international style, if you like, that was widely shared between East and West. We might wonder how we deal with sculptures like this of gods that aren't worshipped anymore. But again, perhaps to a Western as opposed to an Indian audience, this sort of figure has become a secular icon. We, we worship now in museums rather than in a temple. There's also a lot of the iconography here that uh, if you look closely has influenced uh, later Christian tradition. There are Christian representations that will show very similar drapery, for example. 